This week on El Cara Ham Radio, we go back out to the Monticello repeater site and we get to work putting tension on those guy lines that we move from the old rusted anchor posts to the new ones. That's what's coming up next this week on El Cara Ham Radio. Well, we head back out to the Monticello repeater site, and KI4RWO Ken brings out his trusty uh, tripods and transits so that we can see how poorly this antenna is currently, uh, what shape it is in, by seeing how plumb it is. And as we will see, it's not very plumb at all. Now, we, what we have done up to this point is we transferred the guy lines from the old rusted anchor posts to the new ones that we installed with 81 bags of concrete per post. As best as we could tell by looking at the old posts and when we were digging just in front of them, we didn't hit any concrete for the old posts. So we don't know how many bags of concrete were used with the old rusted anchor posts, but uh, it wasn't very much. And they were also using uh, an anchor cable on the backside just to try to keep it from moving forward. So Ken is setting up the other tripod here and then we'll get out his trusted David White transits, get those level and then start utilizing the transits to go up one of the legs of the tower to see if the tower is plumb. In some cases, what you'll find is that the towers actually bowed a little bit depending on which of the lines have tension and which do not. And it's our job or Ken's job to help us learn how to get these guy lines to be equalized in such a way as to keep the tower as straight as possible up into the air. We also have a couple of other variables on this trip in that our tower is not all of the same manufacturer. About two thirds of it is uh, one type of tower manufacturer and then the top third is a different with a plate that helps anchor it or install it to the top of the tower. So occasionally you will have some variation in the tensioning of your wire based on two different types of tower. We have a slightly smaller gauge length of tower on the top. So Ken is going through the transit. Now what he's done is he's uh, focused on one of the legs to see how straight it is as he goes up and up and up. And he would have liked to have been a little further back with this particular tripod, but he was still able to get an idea of how plumb or not so plumb it was. Let's listen in on a few of our conversations. What is it? Are we looking at about the same for this tower as the other one, or is it going to be slightly different? Well, we still want these here. We want about 700 pounds. 700 this on it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So that'll be what 30. Two, so about yeah, about 30, 30, about 31, 31 on it. And that brings us to another variable with this particular tower. We have larger diameter cable. Therefore, the tensioning will actually be a little bit different than it was on the 88 site. So we're using his trusty gauge to get an idea of how much tension there is currently. Some of the wires were coming in at 15, others were coming in in the mid 20s. Our target for many of these cables is gonna be in the 30 range. So you can see we've got a lot of work to do. We gotta to, got to turn those buckles quite a bit to get them up to where we need to be. And in addition to that, we have to keep an eye with the transits on, are we getting the tower straight up and down without a bow? Because what can happen is if you're too tight on the top and too tight on the bottom, all of a sudden, or not so tight, the middle is very tight, you've got a bow in your tire where it is not sticking straight up and it is not plumb. This way, now we need to pull it back that way and get it plumbed on this side. Uh -huh. And but, so we'll tension on this side or do we have to go to the... No, he's, he's over there doing that now, so... Okay. The great thing about working with Ken, and in this case, he brought his dad with him who has years of experience putting up towers and doing these cable tensioning jobs, is you know just by looking at your tower with the transits and where the bow is occurring, where you need to pull from. Because keep in mind, you've got uh, three legs of guy lines 120 degrees out, and they've got a lot of practice understanding that if you tension on one side, it has another impact on the other side. 
It still needs to go that way just a little bit, but we can do that when we adjust the rest of them. And that's in fact what we did. We started going around the tower, utilizing both of the transits to see if we can get most of that bow out of the tower. Now, not a lot of towers are gonna be perfectly straight up and down, especially with some age on them. Well, that one, two, three, four, that fourth guy war up there, if we work on that and pull it back this way, that'll, that'll straighten it all back up. Oh, cool. So we stay over here and tighten that fourth wire? Yeah. Nice. And that's also what we did. So again, this is where experience really comes to play. And it's a lot of fun watching Ken utilize his equipment, and then he's so good at uh, uh, giving us some of the same knowledge. I'd stop right there. Huh? I'd stop right there. Okay. As you can see, our guys are out there on that one leg. They were turning on that buckle while Ken was looking through the reticle. Now these come off of shipping, a shipping, a container ship. Oh, okay. And they use them once, and then when they get to California, they don't use them no more. Yeah. And then they sell them for an hour. You want me to hold the top one, Ken? Yeah. Let me get up here. I, got, I brought my little wrench. I'll put it in there. Go ahead. So it's this part that takes the longest because we've got to turn those buckles, and it helps to have somebody on the top side to keep here, it from turning. Almost 30. And this is what takes the longest. You know, you've got to turn these 10, 15, 20, 30 times, especially if they were really loose, to get the tension that you're looking for to target, which was for us on this day, 30 on the gauge. When it's short like that, it's hard to get in, isn't it? <laughs> All right. Yep. Yep. There you are. Yep. You're there. Should I bring it this way? I should. Huh? We should have. We just put the tension on it. What is it? 31. Adjusting those others, these bottom ones have gotten really loose. Right. So as you can see, we're at about 24 there, and that means we got to turn those buckles to get them up to 30. And uh, <laughs> depending on how the buckle was installed, we'd have to turn clockwise. The another buckle might be counterclockwise because they were put in opposite ways but we ended up figuring it out and we started in the middle worked our way down and then worked our way up on each leg how's it looking Ken? Well, we're a lot closer than where we were when we started good so once we have the uh, guy lines tensioned uh, pretty close to where we need them. One of the final chores that we need to do is take some of this excess uh, that's coming off one of the guy lines and running it through these buckles. This prevents the buckles from turning and loosening over time or even somebody inadvertently trying to turn the buckles that would loosen the tensioning over time as well. And uh, we'll have to do this on all three of the legs. All righty, we're at the second transit. How are we looking? <laughs> looking pretty good. Well, that's what we want to hear. I think we just... It's always checking one of the top lines, top guy lines here. There's six of them total each leg. That's 18 that we had to do, utilize some form of tensioning. And again, once we were done, we would wrap up each leg by putting the uh, excess cable through the buckles. No, that's all right. We don't have to be. <laughs> We're fortunate as a club to have Ken and his dad uh, helping us out with this tower. And as many of you know that have been following along is the great thing about having this, uh, this quality of, of engineering is now we can start climbing this tower again. We've replaced the anchor posts, we've tensioned the guy lines, now it's safe to get back onto the tower where we have a lot of work to do. And then we finish up. This was the last leg I think it was before we start putting the clamps on to prevent this excess cable from being 
pulled back through and preventing those buckles from turning. So now as we put the clamps on to finish up our workday on the Monticello repeater, we are ready for the next set of projects at this location. And we wanted to show you some of this work because whoever is in charge or owns your tower, they have to do this kind of maintenance maintenance from time to time. Good thing about most towers is once you have them where you need them, they don't need a lot of maintenance from year to year. Not be a good thing, right? You would not like it, I guarantee it. I am so thrilled about what we've done with these. Oh, me too. As a club. I gotta go to the other side. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look at you. Uh -huh. Getting smart. Uh, work smarter, not harder. Although it's not easy. That's all they're there for. In case one of these turnbuckles lets go or a line lets go, it catches things. Mm -hmm. It'll be looser than a goose, but it'll catch it. You know? Mm -hmm. And Mr. Steve takes I'm his crescent wrench, yeah. tightens up headways, these tires. The but he's got it going, and we'll have a, a clamp on each leg on that excess Not cable. We've got to come back a little bit later with something to cut the additional excesses we have on some of the other guy lines at a future date. But that's pretty much all that was needed. And as we span up now, as we go up the tower, you can see... We are ready to go. We've got a lot of excess cable, old antennas that are not being used. Uh, we want to install new cable, new antennas for the new repeaters that we're going to be putting into our shack. And again, I'd recommend you go back and look at how, where this repeater site has come from and how much has been done. For the Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association, I'm KY4BDP. We hope you like the series. Stay tuned as we start installing new equipment. 73. Thank you.